Hi everyone, welcome back to another video of your course, Math 102B, Differential and Integral Calculus. This is your instructor, Engineer Jonaika A. Tapiador. Today we will be talking about derivatives, or simply this is the official start of your differential calculus. So basically, how do we differentiate certain functions and at the end of this module you should be able to apply the basic rules of derivatives in solving algebraic functions and discuss the application of derivatives in mathematics so this module will comprise the definition the interpretation uh, your differentiation formulas product and quotient rule and lastly, the higher order derivatives. So starting with the definition, so in the first section of the limits chapter, we saw that the computation of the slope of a tangent line, the instantaneous rate of change of a function, and the instantaneous velocity of the object at x is equal to a, all required us to compute the following limit. Diba? You should already be familiar with this. So, the limit of a certain function f of x minus f of a all over x minus a as x approaches a. So, we can actually try then to, uh, kumbaga, re rearrange natin yung formula na yun such that we will have this. So, in this na x, papalitan lang natin ng variable na h. So, we have the limit of the function, or, or rather the limit of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h as h approaches 0. So, this formula is actually being used for you to be able then to calculate the differential of a certain function. So, it says here, this is such an important limit and it arises in so many places that we give it a name. We call it a derivative. So, let's take a look at the official definition of a derivative. So, the derivative of f of x with respect to x is the function f prime of x and is defined as f prime of x is equal to the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h as h approaches 0. So, parang ito po yung magiging basis natin on how we could calculate the derivative of a certain function. So, let's take a look at an example. So, we have here, find the derivative of the following function, f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 16x plus 35. So, first, we plug the function into the definition of your derivative. So, kung yan po yung definition ng ating derivative, kung bagay ipa-plug lang natin itong function natin. So, how do we do that? So, you have 2 multiplied by x plus h squared minus 16 multiplied by x plus h plus 35 minus course, the function 2x squared minus 16x plus 35. Kung baga sa bawat x po, isa substitute mo yung, uh, kung baga isa substitute mo si x plus h, and then pag sinabing function of a, parang ito na po yung function of x. So, if you would take a look, diba 2, uh, kung baga kinopy lang natin yung buong function, however, dun sa parang f of a plus h, parang sinasubstitute lang natin si x plus h doon dun sa function. So, ito naging ganyan. So, x plus h, dinagdagan lang natin siya ng plus h. Of course, since that is a constant, it doesn't matter. Such that, itong buong function na to, is ito siya, yung f of a plus h, and of course, yung f of a natin, minus lang siya, so f of a is equal to f of x. So again ha, um, you just substitute 
x with x plus h and then f of a is the function f of x all over h. So, kinopia lang natin siya. So, such that, how, how would we approach this after we simplify the function? So, now we know from previous chapter that we can't just plug h is equal to 0. Kasi pag plinag mo si h is equal to 0, ito agad is magiging 0, which is cannot be. Kasi division by 0 will give you an error. So what do we do? We are going to do some work, simplification, such that we can get rid of this h para ma-solve uh, ma po natin yung derivative ng function. So, what we did was just to expand this and then, syempre, uh, dinistribute natin si 2 and then, ito na yung kinalabasan niyan. So, itong buong function na to, yan yun. So, 2 times x plus h squared. So, please take note that naka-square siya. So, you need to expand that first before, before uh, distributing number 2. So, you will have 2x squared plus 4xh plus h squared. Minus, of course, 16x minus 16h plus 35. Tapos yung minus dyan, i-substitute mo lang din. So, you will have minus 2x squared minus 16x. Of course, negative times a positive is negative 35. Of course, you divide that by h. And then, if you take a look, marami actually tayo pwedeng i-cancel dito. So, negative 16 will cancel out with positive 16. 35 here will cancel out with negative 35 there. The 2x squared here will cancel out with the negative 2x squared there. Tapos, yun lang. Such that, you will have this equation. So, you have the limit of 4xh plus 2h squared minus 16h all over h as h approaches zero. And then, kung makikita nyo, you have h for each of the um, variable here. So, pwede natin siyang i-factor out. And then, of course, you will be left with h times 4x plus 2h minus 16 divided by h. And you could cancel this h in that h below. Then you will be left with that. And this time, you could already substitute h is equal to 0. And substituting, substituting that will give you 4x minus 16, such that this is your final answer. So the derivative of your uh, function is equal to 4x minus 16. Kung baga ko ito yung function, yan po yung kanyang derivative. So that's how you get the derivative of a function. So kung tutusin, medyo mahaba siya. But later on, we will take a look on how we could uh, may mga formulas tayo na pwedeng gamitin para mas uh, mapadali po yung pagkuha natin ng derivative of a function. But that is how you get the derivative of a function using the long method. So next, let's go to your differentiation formulas, or rather, sorry, uh, interpretation of derivative muna tayo. So, so this, dito muna tayo. Interpretation of a derivative. So, let's take a quick look at an interpretation of the derivative that we just solved. So, suppose that the amount of water in a holding tank at t minutes given by the function v of t is equal to 2t squared minus 16t plus 35. So, we are to determine each of the following. So, first, is the volume of water in the tank increasing or decreasing when the time is equal to 1 minute? And is the volume of the water in the tank decreasing or increasing at time is equal to 5 minutes? Um, this is actually an application of derivative. So, at that particular instant of time, 1 minute or 5 minutes, i-determine natin kung yung volume ba sa loob or yung water ba dun sa loob ng tank is dumadami or kumukonte. So, using this particular function that we are given, we will determine this um, particular questions or we will answer those particular questions. 
So, of course, the very first thing we do is we solve the der derivative of this function. So, kung tutuusin, medyo familiar to, kasi pareho to dun sa example kanina. It's just that yung variable imbis na x, napalitan lang ng t. Such that, if you solve for the derivative, di ba na-solve na natin kanina, ito na siya. So, v prime of t is equal to 40 minus 16, or sometimes they write it as this one. Siguro mas familiar kayo with that. The derivative of v in terms of t is equal to 40 minus 16. Either way, it's just uh, the same. Uh, pareho lang din naman po yan. Actually, napakarami nating derivative symbol. Uh, most common, ito po yung ginagamit. But for simplicity, mas madali kasi kung ito. Kasi prime lang eh. Or, but usually for your higher subjects or higher courses rather, um, ang nakasanayan po kasi ito. But anyway, they mean the same thing. So now, we are to answer the volume of water in the tank increasing or decreasing at time is equal to 1 minute. So in this case, all we need is the rate change of the volume at time is equal to 1 or is a substitute mo lang yung t is equal to 1 dun sa derivative na nakuha natin. Such that you have v prime of t is equal to 4 times 1 minus 16 where that will be negative 12. So, at t is equal to 1, the rate of change is negative and so the volume of the tank must be decreasing at this particular time. So, yun po yung application niya. Time rates. And another one is the volume of the tank increasing or decreasing at time is equal to 5 minutes. So again, same principle, you just substitute 5 in the first derivative or the derivative that we got. So that will be 4 multiplied by 5 minus 16, which will give you a positive 4. So that means at time is equal to 5 minutes, the rate of change is positive and so the volume must be increasing at this particular time. So next, the differentiation formulas. So in the previous slides, we saw that the definition of the derivative and how to compute derivative using the definition. And if you saw from the example, uh, there was a fair amount of work to do in computing the limits and functions that we worked with were not really that complicated. So for more complex functions, using the definition of the derivative would be almost impossible task. So luckily for us, we won't have to use the definition often. So we will have to use it on occasion. However, we have a collection of formulas and properties that we can use to simplify uh, getting the derivative of the functions whenever possible. So let's first go to the property. So suppose we have the function f of x plus another function uh, let's call it g of x and we are to get the first derivative or the derivative of that so that's why you have that symbol prime so it's simply equal to the fun uh, the derivative of x plus it's either plus or minus the derivative of g of x or if you want to use this symbol the deal over dx so they actually mean the same thing pareho lang po yan so, you will have df over dx plus or minus dg over d, dx. And another one. So, suppose you have a constant here, c of f of x, and you are to get the derivative of that. It's simply equal to the constant multiplied by the derivative of the function of x. Or, again, this is just another fancy way of writing it d over d of x of c of f of x is c multiplied by df all over dx, wherein your c is any number. And for the formulas, so if f of x is equal to a constant, then f prime of x is equal to 0. So this means that if you have a constant, say for example, f of x is equal to 29 and you are to get the derivative of that so f prime of x is equal to 0 so this only says that the derivative of any constant is 0 
and property 2, if f of x is equal to x raised to n, then f prime of x is equal to n times x raised to n minus 1, or again, d over d of x times x raised to n is equal to nx raised to n minus 1, where n is any number. So, for example lang, ibig sabihin niya, suppose you have f of x is equal to 2x cubed. Diba? In this case, you have x and then you have n, which is equal to 3. Or, simplihan natin para mas madaling ano, x cubed na lang kunyari. So, f of x is equal to x cubed. So, in this case, this is your n. So, ibig sabihin lang po niyan, ang derivative po ng ating function is equal to, diba, ito. So, you have 3 multiplied by x raised to n minus 1 or 3 minus 1 is 2. So, the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. So, you have to be familiar with this because you get to see this a lot later on. So, kunyari x squared yan, di magiging. So, kung it's x squared, so, ang kanyang first derivative ay, again, that copy just the constant there. Then, 2x raised to 2 minus 1 is 2x. So, let's take a look at this example. So, differentiate or get the derivative of the following function. f of x is equal to 15x times 100 minus 3x raised to 12 plus 5x minus 46. So, again, we will differentiate each of the terms using properties 1 and 2 and formulas 1 and 2 and then put them back together with a proper sign. So, the derivative of x is equal to 15 multiplied by, diba? in this case, kasi this is your n. So, multiplied by 100 times x raised to 100 minus 1. Tapos dun sa kabila, 3x raised to 12. So again, that's 3 multiplied by 12. Kasi in this case, your 12 is the n. 12 multiplied by x raised to 12 minus 1. Diba? Ito yung n minus 1 natin. Then, finally, plus 5x. Diba? Ito kasi naka-raise yan sa 1. So yung 1 dyan is your n. So 5 times 1 raised to x or rather multiplied by x raised to 1 minus 1. And of course, as we already mentioned earlier, the derivative of the function of a constant rather is 0. Such that if we simplify this one, you get the derivative of x is equal to 1500x raised to 99 minus 36 raised 36x raised to 11 plus so that's how you get the derivative. Using properties 1 and 2 and formulas 1 and 2 would actually simplify your life. So let's take a look at another one. So let's differentiate or get the derivative of the following function. g of t is equal to 2t raised to 6 plus 7t minus 6. So you get the first derivative or the derivative. So you have, diba? 2 times 6, which is, this one is your n. 6 raised, uh, multiplied by t raised to 6 minus 1. And of course, you have here, your n is negative 6. So that's negative 6 multiplied by t raised to negative 6 minus 1. And then simplifying this further, you get, diba yan? 12 t raised to 5 minus 42 t raised to negative 7. This is negative 6 minus 1 is yes, negative 7. So let's go to your product and quotient rule. So to differentiate products and quotients, we have the product rule and quotient rule. Kung mapapansin nyo kasi sa previous slides natin, di ba puro may plus or minus yung ating mga function. So what if multiplication naman siya or division. So, how do we deal with that? So, luckily, we have um, formulas that we can use in order to get the derivative of uh, a function having product or quotients. So, if if the two functions f of x and g of x are differentiable, then the product is differentiable and we have this formula 
So, for example, you will get the derivative of f of g. Then, this is simply getting the derivative of f multiplied by g plus uh, f and then the derivative of g. So, parang, ano siya, for the first one, you will treat g as constant and then you have the plus sign there. Then, for the second one, you will treat f as a constant. So, yung una, G yung constant, yung sa pangalawa, F po yung constant. And of course, for the quotient rule, so if you have an, uh, two functions, F of X and G of X, this is how you get their quotient. So, F all over G prime is equal to, parang yung kanina din, F prime times G minus F times G prime all over G squared. This time kasi, take a look, meron po tayong minus sign. Diba? Pag product rule plus siya, pag quotient rule minus siya. Again, for the first here, for the first one, you will treat you will treat G as constant. For the second here, you will treat F as constant. Gano'n pinagkaya ba lang nila sa product rule? You have this minus sign here and of course, nakadivide, by, nakadivide siya by the square of your G. So, let's take a look at certain examples for you to, uh, para mas makita nyo siya. So, let's have this. For example, you are asked to differentiate the following uh, function. So, the third root of x squared multiplied by 2x minus x squared. So, product rule siya. So, syempre, ang pinakauna natin gagawin is to simplify the function. So, you get rid of this radical sign. Such that you have x raised to 2 thirds. Dapat familiar na kayo kung paano ito gawing um, exponent kasi pinakita ko na yun in the previous videos. So, x raised to 2 thirds multiplied by the, uh, multiplied by 2x minus x squared. Then, we use the product rule uh, treating this as your f and then ito as your g. So, ito yung, kumbaga kanina, ito, at, ito po yung ating f prime g, tapos ito yung ating g, uh, f g prime. Yun. Diba? Such that y prime, or the, the derivative of y is equal to, diba ito, gagamitan natin ng uh, property and formula. So, you have, you cap, yung n po dito is yung 2 thirds, so you have 2 thirds. Multiplied by x raised to 2 thirds minus 1. So, yan po yung first derivative ng function. And then, again, you treat g as a constant. So, you have it there 2x minus x squared plus. So, dun tayo sa second one. You treat f as a constant. Kaya, kinapi lang siya dyan. Then, you get the derivative of g. So, you get the derivative of g. That will be 2 times 1. Multiplied by x raised to 1 minus 1 minus 2 multiplied by x raised to 2 minus 1. So, you get, yun yung po yung derivative nung ating g prime. So, brain ko lang to. Such that, if you try to simplify this further, you will come up with this. 2 thirds, uh, two -thirds multiplied by x raised to 1 third multiplied by 2x minus x squared plus x raised to 2 thirds multiplied by 2 minus 2x. And then simplify, simplifying the derivative further, you will get that y or y prime is equal to 4 thirds multiplied by x raised to 2 thirds minus 2 thirds x raised to 5 thirds plus 2x raised to 2 thirds minus 2x raised to 5 thirds. So, you can actually simplify this further kasi you have like terms together. Diba? Yan o, like terms sila. Kasi paraw sila na exponent. Coming up with this final answer, y prime is equal to 10 all over 3 times x raised to 2 thirds minus 8 all over 3 times x raised to 5 thirds. So, that's how, that's actually the derivative of this function. So, pag kinuha mo yung derivative nito, ito po yung lalabas. Then, let's take a look at the quotient rule. So, paano if you have this particular function naman? 
W, uh, w of z is equal to 3z plus 9 all over 2 minus z. So again, following the quotient rule, ito kasi iti-treat natin to as your f. Then of course, ito is iti-treat natin as your g. So again, di ba, ang pinakauna, you have f prime g minus f g prime. So unahin na natin to. So, una, di ba, yung f prime natin. So, you will just get the derivative of your 3z. So, in this case, that, that will be 3. Multiplied by 1 times z raised to 1 minus 1. Plus, or rather, sorry, iba pala yan. Sorry, let me just erase that. So, ito palang buong function na yan, yan yung f mo, and itong function na to, yan yung g mo. Sorry for the error there. So, again, ito din naman, ba Ito lang din yun. Ang pagkakaiba lang natin is, um, minus sign, tapos nakadivide siya ng g squared. So, that's your quotient rule. So again, we'll just be getting the derivative of f. In this case, that's 3z plus 9. So that will be 3 times 1 multiplied by 0 is to 1 minus 1 plus 0. And then you will treat g as a constant. So copy mo lang siya minus. This time you treat f as a constant and then you get the derivative of g. So in this case, diba, ang 2 is 0, ang z is 1. And then you just divide it by... 2 minus z squared. So, once you got this already, the next thing to do is to simplify such that you will have this. W prime of z is equal to 3 multiplied by 2 minus z minus 3 times z plus 9 minus 1 all over 2, z, 2 minus z squared. And simplifying further will give you that and then you have this final answer. Kasi ito tsaka yan magka-cancel out. So you have the value prime of z is equal to 15 minus, or rather 15 all over 2 minus z squared. So yan po yung derivative ng function na ito. So the last topic is your higher order derivatives. So in the first section, or let's start with let's start this particular topic with the following function. You have f of x is equal to 5x cubed minus 3x squared plus 10x minus 5. And by this point, we should be able then to differentiate or get the derivative of this function without any problem. So doing this will give you that. Diba? Um, dapat medyo familiar na kayo na pag nakita nyo to, alam nyo na na it's... 3 multiplied by 5 will get you 15, then x raised to 3 minus 1 which is 2, and then dito naman 2 multiplied by 3 will give you 6, x raised to 2 minus 1 is 1, and then of course this is 10 multiplied by 1 times x raised to 1 minus 1, then of course minus 5 is 0. So ang derivative po nito is this one. So you have 15x squared minus 6x plus 10, and then if you notice, we could still differentiate this function. And if we do that, magiging ganito siya, f double prime of x is equal to 30 minus 6. So you will get again the derivative of this particular function. So that will be 30x minus 6, yun po yung derivative nito. And then, if you take a look, the, this second one is called your second derivative and the first one is called your first derivative. And so the third derivative is f triple prime of x is equal to 30. And of course, you could still get the derivative of that, which is 0. Yeah. So collectively, the second, third, fourth, etc. of a derivatives of a function are called your higher order derivatives. 
So if if um if you are asked to get the second derivative, third, fourth derivative of a certain function, we call that your higher order derivatives. So let's take a look at this example. So we are to find the first four derivative of this function. You have r of t is equal to 3t squared plus 8t raised to 1 half plus 5. So by simply solving for the first derivative, you will get diba, 2 times 3 is 6 raised to t minus 2, uh, t raised to 2 minus 1. So we'll get 6t. Then of course, this, the 8 multiplied by 1 half is 4. Then t raised to 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. And of course, the derivative of a, of a constant is 0. And then the second derivative is, so r double prime of t is equal to, the 6 times t is simply 6. And then 4t minus 1 half, the derivative of that is negative 2, minus, uh, negative 2 raised to t raised, um, rather negative 2 multiplied by t raised to negative 3 halves. Getting the third derivative will give you 3t minus 5 halves. And then getting the fourth derivative is equal to negative 15 all over 2 multiplied by t raised to negative 7 halves. So, yung po yung tatlong sagot, or rather, apat na sagot. So, you have this one, that's the first. This is the second. This one is the third derivative, and this one is the fourth derivative. So, that's it for this particular video. So, that covers your topics on derivatives. For the next one, we'll be starting with your integrals already. So please do work on the activity that is set in your canvas as your practice for this particular topic. So as I always say class, please stay home, stay healthy, and stay safe. Goodbye everyone!